The development of sporophyte. The single zygotic cell which is diploid in its nature secretes a cellulosic wall around it and protects itself when it is in the stage of development. The first division in the zygotic cell is a vertical oblique division. These divisions differ in different species of anthocyros. In anthocyros levis, it is a vertical oblique division. In anthocyros crispulus, it is a transverse division. So the division, the first divisions are different in different species. So we'll just take the example of anthocyros levis and explain. The first vertical division occurs, which results in the formation of two cells. Further, another division occurs at right angles to the first vertical division which results in the formation of four cells. All the four cells divide transversely and an octant stage is formed. That is an eight celled stage is formed. These cells may be equal in size or in certain cases the lower cells are smaller than the upper four cells. The lower four cells, the eight cells are arranged in two tires, lower four cells and the upper four cells, upper tire of cells and lower tire of cells. The lower four cells divide in all planes to form a massive foot which is bulbous in its nature has elongated palisade like cells towards the outside and vacuolated parenchyma in the center of the foot region. The upper eight cells, the upper tire of eight cells, four cells divide again by a transverse wall resulting in the formation of eight cells. Now here is an octant stage where eight cells are arranged. Four cells on the upper tire, four cells on the lower tire. The four cells of the lower tire has divided to form the foot. There are four cells in the upper tire. These four cells will divide once again transversely and form eight cells. One, two, three, four and four in the other tire. At this eight cell stage all the eight cells will divide by a periclinal wall towards the periphery of the cells. The periclinal division results in the formation of an outer layer of cells and an inner mass of cells. The outer layer of cells is called as the amphithecium and an inner mass of cells is called as the endothecium. The amphithecium results in the formation of the wall. That is all the eight cells of the amphithecium starts dividing. They divide anticlinally. The first division was periclinal so that an outer layer of cells is formed and an inner mass of cells is formed. After the formation of the amphithecial layer, the eight cells of the amphithecium divide anticlinally so that the size of the capsule increases. The number of cells are added to the capsule of anthocyros. This is the amphithecium layer. The amphithecium now divides all the cells of the amphithecium divide by a periclinal wall that is parallel to the axis of the cells. Because of this wall we can see there is an outer layer of cells and an inner layer of cells. The outer layer of cells form the primary wall primary wall of the capsule. 
the inner layer of cells the inner layer of cells they distinguish themselves into the archisporeal tissue or they form the archisporeal tissue so the archisporium that is the sporogenous tissue develops from the amphitheseum amphitheseal layer divides periclinally forms two layers the outer one will remain as the primary wall of the capsule and the inner one develops into the archisporeal tissue further division occurs in the primary wall layers that is as the capsule is growing developing the primary wall layers divide periclinally a number of times to result or they result in the formation of four to six wall layers that is this primary wall layer only the outermost layer again will divide by periclinal divisions and it results in the formation of four to six layers of wall the outermost layer is identified as the epidermis which has highly cutinized cells and the innermost as it is is the archisporeal tissue the archisporeal tissue appears as a dome like structure on the columella now we have just seen how the amphitheseal cells develop now the inner mass of cells which is called as the endothelium there are eight cells in the endothelium all the eight cells will divide once when all the cells divide once they become 16 cells all the 16 cells of the endothelium grow vertically and they form 16 vertical rows of cells which forms the columella that is the complete endothelium is used in the formation of the columella and the amphitheseum develops the wall layers and the sporogenous tissue after the development of the capsule and the foot a meristematic region arises between the capsule and the foot region this is at the junction of the capsule and the foot a meristematic tissue arises when we see the archisporeal tissue the archisporeal tissue has a basipetal arrangement that is the mature cells are towards the apex of the capsule and the developing cells or smaller cells are towards the base of the capsule once the capsule growth is arrested or stops then the meristematic tissue becomes functional it starts producing cells adding up cells to the capsule towards the wall region the meristematic cells will divide and form the wall cells in the archisporeal region the cells will divide to form the archisporeal tissue in the columella region the cells will divide to add up to the cells of columella that is all the three layers that is the wall layers the archisporeal tissue and columella cells are added up for further growth of the capsule and this is done by the meristematic tissue at maturity the cells archisporeal tissue some of them are sterile and some of them are fertile the fertile cells the fertile cells of the sporogenous tissue are called as spore mother cells initially 
uh, when the sporophyte is young, when the capsule is young, there is only one layer of archosporial tissue. But as the sporophyte matures, we find two to three layers of archosporial tissue inside the mature sporophyte. That means here, instead of single layer of cells, we find two to three layers of archosporial tissue. This is only at the maturity of the capsule. The fertile cells inside the capsule are called as the spore mother cells and the sterile cells are called as the elator mother cells. The spore mother cells undergo reduction division that is they divide meiotically to form spore tetrads. Whereas the elator mother cells, they cannot undergo meiosis, so they simply elongate, become irregular, divide two to three times to form three to four cells, and do not develop any thickening on their surface. Because of the absence of spiral thickenings which we have seen in Marchensia that is not seen in Anthocyros. Because of the absence of these thickenings, these elators are called as the pseudo elators. When the capsule matures, the capsule in the initial stages of its development it is green in color, it changes its color to dark yellow to black and then at maturity the capsule will split by longitudinal grooves. It some, in some species it splits, in, splits into two valves and in some species it splits into four valves. So the capsule appears like this when it is, when it splits up. There is a central columella and the capsule splits open like this. We find the wall layers which are 4 to 6 in number on either side. The central region is the columella region which is made up of 16 vertical rows of cells. The function of columella is to help in the dispersal of spores but it is also known to conduct water for the developing spores. The wall layers, three to four, four divisions and four to six wall layers on either side. And in the center is the archosporial tissue. The archosporial tissue shows smaller cells towards the base, four mother cells, alternating with Elator cells and as we go up the spore mother cells are divided by reduction division and spore tetrads are formed whereas the elators have just elator mother cells have elongated and they appear as irregular structures in the sporophytic region, in the sporo sporogenous tissue. This is how it appears at maturity. New cells are being added from the meristematic zone. The meristematic zone adds up cells to the wall, adds up cells to the sporogenous tissue and also adds up cells towards the columella. So this is a basipetal smaller cells, immature cells at the base, fully grown cells at the apex. But meiotic division has already taken place in the cells which are seen in the apical region of the capsule. So when the capsule dehisces, the spores fall on the substratum and they germinate into a new thallus of anthocyros.